topic. Thank you everyone for joining us. This is our first pilot edition of Hot Topic Tuesday. It's pretty exciting and we wanna just welcome everyone who is joining us out on the social media channel. So Hot Topic Tuesday is a typical online discussion workshop series and it's usually via Zoom, but um, today we are doing our first pilot edition podcast. So Hot Topic Tuesday is designed to engage communities in discussions on substance abuse and use prevention related topics and its relevance to current community issues. In prevention work, we understand that substance abuse, it's not a standalone issue, but we wanna recognize that substance misuse and abuse is a response that it's weaved from the complexities of life's experiences, environment conditions and emotions. Today, we have a great topic for you guys, and it is on the Great American Smokeout. So the Great American Smokeout is an annual event sponsored by the American Cancer Society. It's held on the third Thursday of November, so coming right up. And it is an event that focuses on encouraging Americans to quit tobacco smoking. The message is sent to challenge people to stop smoking for at least 24 hours in hopes that this decision will lead them to quit smoking forever. The first American smoke out occurred in California on November 18, 1976. According to American Cancer Society data, Nearly 1 million people stop smoking on that day, making it a perfect occasion to take the first step to quit smoking. Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Baya, and I am the community organizer assigned in the Gardena area. Today, we're going to present, again, the Great American Smokeout. This is, of course, a pilot podcast edition, so we hope you tune in for the full hour to great, get some great information and great personal insights into quitting smoking. I will go ahead and pass it on to my co-moderator, Miss Tiffany Tan. Thank you, Tiffany. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, we wanted to invite everyone and welcome everyone. My name is Tiffany Tan. I'm a community organizer uh, with ADAP, and I work in the city of El Segundo, and I also assist in Carson. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, another co-worker of mine, Miss um, Carol Almeida. Yes, thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Jessica. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carol Almeida, and I, just like Tiffany and Jessica, I work as a community organizer for the Community Prevention Unit of the Asian American Drug Abuse Program, or popularly known as uh, ADAP. And uh, uh, the three of us primarily focused on uh, the tobacco, tobacco work, you know, prevention work. And so, as Jessica mentioned, this is the pilot edition of a podcast celebrating the great American smokeout but we will have a different approach to this in the sense that we will not inundate you with the statistics or facts, but rather we will let you into personal insights. We will feature personal insights into quitting tobacco. And we are so fortunate today to have with us someone who so willingly want to share his experience to be set as an example for all those who are struggling right now and who would like to quit tobacco. His name is Paul Mushonga. I hope I've done justice to pronouncing your surname, Paul. So Paul is a student from Cal State University, Dominguez Hills, just in the South Bay, Pursuing his bachelor's degree in community health, he is currently an intern with the Community Prevention 
unit of uh, ADAP. And he works in the cities of Carson with Richard and Tiffany, as well as in El Segundo, right, Tiffany? That's yeah. right. Yeah. So outside of his internship, this is very interesting. Outside of internship, he actually works as a school bus technician mechanic. Martin, school bus technician mechanic. And enjoys listening to music exercising, and learning to play the guitar during his free time. So let's try to listen. Okay, very interesting. Let's try to listen to his journey towards a tobacco-free and healthy lifestyle. So uh, I will again bounce it back to Jessica for the, for the initial set of questions that she will ask Paul. Jessica, please. Thank you, Carol, for the nice introduction and welcome, Paul. So we have a couple questions, but my first question for you, Paul, is at what age did you start to use tobacco? What was going on in your life that drove you to use tobacco? I, I would say I started smoking immediately after high school. Mm -hmm. I was age 18. There wasn't anything that was going in my life that I could blame for me using tobacco. I just grew up with my uh, one of my brother and uh, my cousins, they smoked cigarettes. And at one time, my dad used to smoke also. So growing up, seeing all these people smoking, to me, it didn't. I didn't think much of it. That it looked kind of cool when you see when you see people you look up to and they were smoking. So I didn't see anything wrong with it. So that's how I just at age eighteen, I thought I was old enough and I could just smoke. And uh, of course. When I started, I thought I had all the control. I could stop anytime I wanted to. And that's how I started. Mm -hmm. So the time when you were smoking, um, you mentioned your a couple family members were smoking too at the same time. Do you actually remember the first product, the tobac first tobacco product you used? It was just uh, regular cigarettes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just, bought a pack of cigarettes and I started smoking and um, that was that. That's how I started and uh, it wasn't like, you know, any big deal at all. It's, mm -hmm. I just looked at it, uh, I saw everybody smoking and they looked cool. I said, hey, why not, you know? Mm -hmm. Did it ever cross your mind that you would become hooked on the product or did you think you would be able to take one cigarette and put it down? And that's the, it's for me, that was the biggest thing because you see, I thought I will smoke whenever I want to and I'll stop whenever I want to, but I, I soon found out that wasn't the case. And uh, because once I got hooked, I think it took me, what, within three weeks? In the beginning, of course, yes, I smoked whenever I wanted to. And uh, before I knew it, three weeks later or so, I was smoking because I had to. Because, you know, all the time I had the age of smoking because, you see, after eating or like just to relax, when, you know, when I'm tired or like when I'm stressed out. Because you see, for me, cigarettes were fixing everything that was going on in my life. If I was angry, I would smoke. If I was tired, I would smoke. And uh, after eating, I would smoke. So that's how I got hooked and, um, and that's how it started. Yeah, it's so interesting. You brought up a good point. Uh, oftentimes we wanna think about who introduces you to your first uh, cigarette? Um, and I like how you mentioned that it was someone you knew. It was your family. Yep. 
you know, oftentimes we get like this, um, you know, idea that there's this uh, scary drug dealer in the corner of the school handing out free cigarettes. But really that first initial hook, that first introduction comes from a person we know and we trust. And in your case, it was your family. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it was almost normalized in your family to see people smoke. It, um, it, it was because you see, I didn't see anything wrong with it and nobody. So, I mean, when you look back at it, you might say, you know, people didn't know the health implications behind that smoking. So it there wasn't any big deal about even uh, the idea that I could start smoking. Yeah. 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 My next question is, um, when you started smoking, how long were you an actual smoker? How long did you use tobacco products? I would say like almost 15 years. No, <gasps> wow. Yeah. 15 years. Okay. Yeah. My goodness. That's a really long time to be smoking. Mm -hmm. yep. And I think it's even more of an accomplishment that, you know, you're not smoking now. Um, within those 15 years, how many times did it take you to actually quit smoking before you successfully um, quit smoking? A real quitting, I, I would say two times. The second one was the successful one because the first time I did quit and, um, but you know, I think it came a little bit easier because you know, I tried using a nicotine patch mm -hmm. and of course it worked, but I thought I had it under control and because I worked with a guy who smoked also. It, for some reason, when I got to work, he would offer me a cigarette. He would offer me one and uh, I would take it. I say, oh, you know, I got control. Now I know what to do. But then before you know it, I ask him for another one and another one. And then before you know it, he would say, hey, that's too much. You go and buy your own pack. Then I would say, okay, that's fine because I can afford it. So I'll just go back and buy a pack. And before you know it, I was smoking again. Yeah. Then I had to master all the efforts in quitting. And um, and eventually I went back on a um uh, on a nicotine patch. And um I was able to quit, and this time it was the final time and uh, of course in the beginning after quitting you see somebody smoking you have that edge of wanting to smoke but you know as long as I kept myself busy that was fine and uh, I didn't have to smoke so eventually now I can see somebody smoking I don't, it doesn't even bother me and one thing is you know when I was smoking I never, I did, I never did have that. I, I never did smell the cigarettes smell, you know. But now that I haven't smoked for a while, somebody smokes, I can actually smell it, and it's not a that it's not a pleasant smell. But when I was smoking, I couldn't. I did. I, I, I never had that kind of reaction towards uh, anyone smoking. Mm -hmm. So when you uh, your second time you actually successfully quit uh, mm -hmm. what was your like um, what sort of caused you to think like okay I'm gonna quit and I'm gonna be successful at this was it did mm -hmm. you start noticing like body changes in in yourself where you started feeling like a little sluggish and tired and then you realized okay I gotta quit smoking or was it starting to hurt your pocket like I got to buy my own pack now. My friend is like, my family and friends are telling me like, look, you want to smoke? You buy your own pack. You can't, I can't hand you anymore. Look, you, you're, this is costing me. And this is now costing me to buy um, me some and you some. So you got to buy your own. So 
what was that factor that that aha uh-huh sort of moment like I gotta quit and this is gonna be the second time but this is gonna be the last and final time none of the above it, it wasn't the money issue or it was more the educational part of it understanding uh the um the downside of smoking, the health implications uh, that come with smoking. And because you see my sister, she's a chemist and uh, I have a cousin with doctors and, and, and nurses and they're working in oncology. So, you know, and also me going to college and finding out all these um, health effects from smoking. I think that was the main drive because I never had my body, it never affected me because you see, I've always from age 18, I was pushing weights. I was way bigger than I am with muscles that if somebody saw me, they wouldn't even know that I smoked. Yeah. And uh, I could uh, go to the park, smoke a cigarette, run around the track and come back and smoke another cigarette. It never affected me. But you see, I knew even though it didn't affect me that much, I could tell that you see my kind of breathing when I was smoking and the breathing when I wasn't smoking, you could tell that much of it. There is a difference, but it, was, it, it wasn't the thing that affected me that much that I said, you know what, it's affecting me, my body. But I can tell you this, the first time I started you know, in the morning I would wake up when I'm brushing my teeth and you know, you I, I gargle with mouthwash and all that. And then when I speak sometimes in the morning, you would see that spit, some blood comes out. And that's, you can tell that's a, a person who smokes. And the only time I felt the impact of smoking is like when I had a cold, the, the coughs were a little bit longer Mm-hmm. And, you know, they were kind of a little bit intense, but because the cigarette solves everything, I would, be, I would cough. And uh, as soon as I stop, I'll just go back, light another cigarette and I would feel better. And uh, that's how it, it went. So it, w- it wasn't like a specific thing that said, oh, you know what, I have to quit, but besides the knowledge of the detrimental effects of smoking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also the family members saying, hey, you know, you have to quit smoking. But you see, they didn't kind of beat up on me and saying, you have to, you have to. You know, it was like, you know, a way of, because believe it or not, I wanted to quit myself, but as tough as it was, because you see, whenever they try to push harder, I would be kind of more resistant to it. So, but it worked because you see, I think my sister ended up getting me a, a, a nicotine patch. Mm-hmm. And they said, hey, you can try this. And of course, that's how I got it first time. And um, so, and the second time I used it and, and it worked both times. So that's why, uh, because, Anything else, I don't know if I would have been able to quit without the uh, nicotine patch. Mm-hmm. Wow. Thank you for your shared information and background, especially when you highlighted the mouthwash. It just kind of stuck with me. I'm, I'm just curious to know how many cigarettes were you smoking at one point in one day? Well, that's the thing. It depended, like if it's a long day, Busy time, like maybe 10 cigarettes, the most maybe like 12 or 15. The most, if I stayed uh, late at, out at night, you know, but otherwise, 10 the minimum. 10 the minimum. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so there wasn't even 10 the maximum, it was 10 the minimum. The minimum. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because. I mean, sometimes, you know, you, you light it up, you, you just smoke like halfway because if you are busy and you have it like on your mouth, just dangling, and of course. And you know, the thing is with 
most areas saying not allowing people to smoke, like the work area, you have to actually leave. Is it that kind of slows you down because you have to like smoke during your break time? But you know, uh, it's the the thing that I hated the most is everybody else treats you like a pariah, you know, because you, you smoke. Yeah. But it, oh, my point is, people have to be empathetic to some extent on the plight of those who smoke because you see, believe it or not, some of them really want to stop, but because they are hooked and uh, they just need a little bit of understanding, I think. That's how I look at it. Yeah, yeah. wow. Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for sharing. At this time, I want to pass it over to my co-host, co-moderator, Ms. Tiffany Tan. Go ahead and take on the next part of our discussion of our podcast. Thank you so much. Um, actually, Paul, if you can kind of go back, you mentioned you had your family, um, you had the, well, you had the support of your family, and you also started feeling you know, a heavy breathing. Um, when you were sick, you were really, really sick. When you were coughing, you were really, really coughing. Mm -hmm. um, again, when you were just doing your daily hygiene care, you kind of saw some, some alarming issues, mm -hmm. um, so to speak. But what, at what point did you realize, hey, Paul, myself, or in the speaking of you, hey, I have to quit smoking? What, was there a defined moment? Was there, you know? You see, mind, mind you, when, all this started when I was in Africa, right? When I started smoking. So by the time I, I came over here, mm -hmm. And um, I just, from listening to the, you know, to the news and going to school and learning about all these mm -hmm. things, that's when I started knowing that, you know, it wasn't a good thing, smoking health-wise. But for a while, I still smoke because, you see, the thing is coming up with a way of quitting smoking because I remember I worked with this other girl she used to smoke and then she told me she was able to use hypnosis for a while and she was able to quit smoking but you see I never got the chance to try that so I just kept on you know I would like sometimes try to cut down on the amount yeah you can only do so much because you see then your body needs that nicotine and uh, so sometimes you see and a little bit of stress and you tend to smoke a little bit more because that cigarette is what kind of mellows you out because you see you are ang let's say you're angry you smoke a cigarette you kind of kind of cools you down mm -hmm. you know you get mellow and uh, so it kind of relieves the anger or if you are tired you know you're just relaxing and yeah. uh, you know, it helps you relax. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's the re that's what makes it harder to quit because you see, it's solving all these issues that mm -hmm. everybody has in their lives almost every other day or every other week, I guess, because life being what it is, you yeah. know, sometimes we stress out, sometimes we get angry, sometimes. We are under pressure at work and all those things. And yeah. they, they all actually make it harder for those who might want to quit smoking. I can talk for me. That's yeah. why it was harder. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would you say, and you mentioned something that says like it solves, would you say like solves temporarily? May I, if I could oh. kind of put your brain temporarily? That's the, that's the issue because you see, you it solves it. Temporarily, yes, because, but eventually, let's say if it's a problem, that's there, it's a, it's solving it temporarily, but tomorrow that problem is going to be mm. there. But I understand. the point is for me to go through that situation right at that time, mm -hmm. it was what did it, it solved mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. even though it wasn't a permanent solving, but you know yeah wow paul and so you mentioned that it was actually your sister who gave you your first nicotine box your first nicotine patch is that correct yes now can you 
Can you walk me through that? Um, how do nicotine patches work? What are they? Um, how was it for you? What were the levels? If you can explain on that, how did okay. how did nicotine patches help you eventually quit? Okay, so the nicotine patch, I think there are three sizes. Mm -hmm. When I say sizes, we are talking of the amount of nicotine in each of them. Right. You see, the first one, because you see, it depends on the level of a smoker you are, because me, I would consider myself that I was a heavy smoker. Mm -hmm. So I started on the 21 milligram, which is okay, the highest. Gotcha. So you, you see, like I would take a shower in the morning and just put it on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it, you can go to work, like me working on buses, I would go mm -hmm. underneath the bus and everything. No problem, it doesn't come off. Yeah. Or during the day, it's uh, releasing that nicotine through the uh, in, through the skin yeah. into the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would leave it on. And in the evening, I could even take a shower and it stays mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. So then in the morning, I take a shower, I remove it, I put another one. And before you know it, because once I started, uh, once I put on the patch, mm -hmm. I never had to smoke. Because oh. I never had the edge to smoke because you see, I'm already getting the nicotine. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the good thing about it. So, and uh, I would use the box. I think it's each mm -hmm. box is about uh, four weeks. It's a month. Yeah. Uh -huh. Then it's after that, if you're still feeling like you have the edge, mm -hmm. you go to a 14 milligram. 14 milligram. And the 14 milligram is another uh, four weeks. Mm -hmm. And then a seven milligram. But the first time I only used the 21 milligram and I was able to quit then. I would say like I quit for what? Almost a month. Mm -hmm. But then I think it was too early when I, thought I could just smoke one, you know, just to bond with the guys at work. And uh -huh. then before I knew it, I, I was hooked again. Uh -huh. But then the second time I, w I used the 21 milligram, then I even went down to a 14 milligram uh -huh. and then I was able to quit. And uh, since then I haven't looked back. So, wow. Yeah. And no sense of mood swings when you were wearing these. Um, oh, yeah, that's the thing. Any when, that bothered when, you? Or? When you are trying to quit, uh -huh. you get so angry so quickly. Yes, a lot of mood swings, a okay. lot. And, but, I mean, the thing is, I was so determined to quit mm -hmm. that I went through it. And uh, even though sometimes I would, get a little bit uh, angry or annoyed mm -hmm. with things, but I just soldiered on and I said, you know what, I have to quit. Mm -hmm. And because I was just determined that I, I had to quit and um, I was able to overcome it. Yeah. But definitely, definitely you get those mood swings because, yeah, because your body is looking for that nicotine and Mm -hmm. you're not providing it with it so mm -hmm. yes wow. definitely. did you have a support so you mentioned your family again did you have a support group that you can call and say hey I'm really going through it or you know today's one of those days did you have maybe a buddy that was also trying to sm uh, quit smoking alongside with you or you know mm, who was there uh, for you not at all. Uh, I was on my on, on it by myself, and um, I I just had to do it by myself. Your own soul determination. Uh, yeah. Oh. I just I just uh, I wish I had somebody who I could have uh, gone through mm -hmm. with it. Um, but no, it was just me, just myself. Well, did you ever give yourself like mental talks? Like, how did you, again, it's, it's your determination and I, I really applaud you for that, but how, how, how it was just your drive, your determination to it was quit. Just a drive, just saying, mm -hmm. I want to quit because, yeah. I mean, 
and we, that's one thing I think happens with a lot of people. And then, you know, now when I look at it, I I look at my journey what I went through when I was smoking cigarettes, right? Then I look at those people who do all those heavy drugs. Mm -hmm. Now I can empathize with them on what they go through mm -hmm. to try to, to get rid of that addiction. Because I look at it, I say, oh, me, I just had problems smoking cigarettes. They are going even through something that's even uh, more deadlier, mm -hmm. I guess in my mind. So, I mean, I think that's why I was able to push myself to quit because, but yeah. it, all I, I, I can say about that is at least people should be more empathetic, you know, when somebody's, is, or if you're telling somebody to quit, yeah. you, you have to understand that it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. But all you can do is trying to encourage somebody, not beating up on them to say, oh, you have to quit, you know, it's, it's cigarette smell and all that. Yes. Because that you are, it's like you're attacking them. And what what do we do when we feel like somebody is attacking us? Then we, we, we put a defense, right? Yeah. And then I'm not going to listen to you mm -hmm. because I feel like you're attacking me rather than if you're telling me in a nice way and being a more constructive, then I'm more inclined to listen to you because I don't want to disappoint you either because mm -hmm. I know you are empathizing with me. Yeah. 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 And I've, I, you and I had this talk before and I take it to heart now. Um, I agree. I was actually on that side where I was maybe badgering somebody, someone who I love, someone who I cared about. And then now I've taken a step back. I've gone a lot older and I realize it's the empathetic aspect of it. It's the well, I'm always there for you whenever you are ready. So I've taken what you've said generally to heart and I'll always remember this. And I hope that the person that I'm also trying to in some way, shape or form convince them to quit. Um, I hope that I can get back to you and let you know, hey, that person did quit. So I'm hoping on to, that's all the questions I have. I really, Carol, do you have any questions on your end? Yes, I mean, Paul, it was so beautiful. I mean, your account, it's so detailed, you know, it's, for me, it's just like going through a formal intervention program, you know, we're in, I mean, the, you put it out so well, the struggle and everything. And my God, thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I only have just a question, like, mm -hmm. what would have prevented you from using tobacco mm -hmm. so that you don't need to go through this uh, painful or through this struggle? I mean, from the very start, could you say something about what could have prevented you from the, using tobacco? The thing that I, I really think would have worked, would have prevented me from using tobacco from the beginning mm -hmm. is what I ended up finding out a little bit later on, which is education and oh. education and education. That's if I had known especially the health implications of smoking, the adverse effects of uh, the tobacco. I mean, I don't think I would have even started smoking at all. Wow, mm -hmm. wow, thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. Education, yeah. education, yeah. So what would your message be? I mean, especially to a young person who is considering uh, using tobacco or even the emerging products like electronic cigarettes. So what will your message be? How will you talk to, to this somebody? Uh, my message to them would be, when I started smoking, I thought I had all the control in the world. I can stop when I want to and all that, but I found out that's not true. Addiction is a very strong thing. And besides that, smoking can damage your health. And it's something that you can never be able to reverse because you can have all these uh, diseases that are caused from smoking. 
So what I would say to young people is don't start smoking if you can help it because it will help you save your life. Mm -hmm. I, okay, I'll try and put it this way. If you can, please do not smoke at all because it's not healthy. And uh, if you want to live a healthy life, smoking is not the best thing to do. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Sometimes, especially for young people, as they say that the brain of young people is mm -hmm. wired that they don't realize the consequences, you know. So, mm -hmm. so uh, it's, it's really going to be a struggle, right? Messaging and putting out the right message and making people you know making people accept what you are telling them you know especially um sometimes sometimes it's uh it's easier to to uh to uh tell young people that or easier to sway them to tobacco use rather than to tell them that smoking is bad smoking is won't do you any good you know and of course smoking with the nicotine in it causes addiction you know so so it's it's a struggle it's a struggle within yourself so as well as a struggle to put out the message you know to put out the message but i agree with you it's a struggle but it's a struggle that you uh, no parent or adult should give up because you see, looking at myself, I grew up knowing that my my dad always told me that drinking alcohol wasn't the best thing or doing marijuana wasn't the best thing because he educated me on those things at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never, up to today, I've never drank alcohol. I've never used marijuana or any other drug so it to me as far as i look at, as far as i'm concerned when i look at it i think education is of paramount importance when it comes to keeping youth from starting smoking or any of those things i understand we don't want to say don't do this but you see i think especially youth if you empower them with that uh in a way that they are able to make decisions yeah. and thinking for themselves and say, you know what, I, I, before I smoke a cigarette, what, what are my parents going to think about it? Because, I mean, let's face it, it's, it, you, 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 as a kid, you grow up knowing what your parents teach you, right, in life. Yeah besides what your friends are going to teach you. So, because yeah. if your friends teach you how to conduct yourself out there, you're not going to have your friends influence you on doing anything because your parents have already imparted that knowledge to you growing up. So you won't, there won't be anyone to fill that void because you already have your parents uh, doing that job already, so. Yeah. Yeah, so education should start at a young age, you know. Exactly. Yes, and it takes uh, parents, it takes responsible adults to carry that, you know, the uh, education in the formative years of a young, of a person's, uh, of a person's life. Yeah. Beautiful, Paul. Thank you so much for sharing. It's so in-depth, right? Thank it's you. so in-depth and we will always value that experience your life experience and in as much as possible we'd like to share it with uh, with uh, with young people especially with young this is an educational piece i would say this is an educational piece and thank you for for uh, sharing this and for uh, giving this appearance on Hot Topic Tuesday on our podcast. 
for you to daringly share your life story, your mm-hmm. life experience. Okay. So I think we need that, right? Jessica, Tiffany, we need that. Because right now, even with all the policies, even with all the with all the educational materials, you know, there are still how many? I would say uh, one in every five adults are still smoking tobacco. One in every five adults are still smoking tobacco here in the United States, you know. And against, uh, like let's say, all our well-intentioned uh, efforts to educate, to inform and educate against tobacco. The tobacco industry, the tobacco industry spends billions of dollars every year to advertise, to advertise and to lure young people to use because they always need generations of users in order to ensure profit for the tobacco industry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jessica, Tiffany, would you like to add some more, some facts? Actually, I think I got, I got, I grabbed a lot of facts from just hearing Paul, how he said that, you know, in in summarization, smoking leads to diseases, it leads to disabilities, harms, and it also just harms nearly almost every organ in your body. So that was something that unfortunately Paul had to kind of experience throughout his 15 years of smoking. Um, And then also I think one big takeaway is that many adults who smoke cigarettes, they want to quit smoking. So I think hearing that from Paul's Paul's, uh, uh, sharing experience, I think it's it's another fact to also highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and no additional facts and stats from me. I mean, I love the story you shared. It was very compelling from start to finish. You really just thoroughly explained just the the struggle of a smoker, a day-to-day smoker, like the everyday struggles. You think about quitting, you can't because the stress of something happens to hit you on, let's say today is Tuesday, you know, and um, you know, the stress of Tuesday happens and you think about quitting, but you just don't because your pocket, your hands reach into your pocket, you grab that cigarette and grab the lighter. And the next thing you know, it, you just don't know you're outside smoking and you're just like, man, I thought I was going to quit. But, um, you know, kudos to you for quitting. It wasn't hard. It wasn't easy. It was a very difficult, uh, struggle. Mm-hmm. And I want to say, you know, thank you to your family for helping you. Yeah. I mean, family support is number one. You need to make sure that you yourself acknowledge you have an addiction, you have a problem, you're ready for step two of your journey to a healthy life. The next step is that family support. And that's key because they're going to keep you online and they're going to keep you, you know, in check to make sure hey paul i know you're having a hard day you're stressed out but continue on those good efforts Mm -hmm. um and successfully you were able to quit smoking um so thank you for your story thank you for sharing your personal insights into quitting smoking and if you guys are just joining um us live from facebook and watching us on facebook instagram and our social media pages Um, Today was a pilot edition to our podcast on the Great American Smokeout, a Hot Topic Tuesday special. Um, And so with this, I want to pass it over to my colleague, Miss Tiffany Tan, to give us some more information on great resources on how you can quit smoking today. Thank you. And again, once more, congratulations, Paul, on being able to quit smoking. Um, and never going back. <laughs> so the some of the resources we want to share to you all um, is three resources, but there's many more. But the three that we wanted to highlight starts off with the California Smokers Helpline. This helpline offers free telephone counseling and materials to quit smoking, 
quit vaping, as well as even chewing tobacco. Um, free nicotine patches are also available and eligible to callers. These helpline counselors and services are also available in multiple languages, including English, Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, Korean, and Vietnamese. They're available weekdays from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., as well as on Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So whenever you are ready for, to quit smoking, please call 1-800-NO-BUTS to enroll in free telephone counseling. And please feel free to visit www.nobuts.org for more information of their free services. Um, a second resource we wanna highlight is actually is called ASH. ASH stands for Action on Smoking and Health. So since 1967, ASH has been defying the odds and pushing back big tobacco companies leading to a reduced death toll from tobacco. They advocate for health over profits and also innovate leading legal and policy measures to end the global tobacco epidemic. Now, for more information and webinar series, uh, as well as news and events and resources, please visit their website, www.ash.org for more information. And one of our last resources, that's actually one of the main leads for the Great American Smokeout is the American Cancer Society. So for more and also latest news about tobacco and smoking, how to fight against big tobacco, visit cancer.org. Their site includes smokeout materials, which also includes sticker sheets, quit cards, and also a variety of event tools for the Great American Smokeout, how you can participate. And alongside that, resources that can be used in your workplace, your health systems, and also other places in, in your community. So those are the main three ones we wanted to highlight. Once more, that is the California Smokers Helpline at 1-800-NO-BUTS or www.nobuts.org, ASH, which is Action on Smoking and Health, as well as the, Man uh, as well as the American Cancer Society at cancer.org. All right, and now I wanna pass it over to Jessica to conclude Hot Topic Tuesday. Yeah. All right, thank you, Tiffany, for those great resources and information. And of, again, of course, for additional Hot Topic Tuesday workshops, it does happen every Tuesday. Please join us. We have wonderful upcoming Hot Topic Tuesdays coming up in the month of December. Check us out for December 1st. We have World AIDS Day, December 8th, drug use and mental health and so much more. We hope to see you guys again virtually on social media, Facebook, Instagram, on many more wonderful podcasts like the one you have seen today. Again, we have more uh, community organizers that work out in ADAP. We are just one of few that work at ADAP. And so if you're wanting more information and resources on substance abuse, how to quit smoking today, please reach out to um, the wonderful folks. In the South Bay area, we have the lead organizers, uh, Jeannie Shimatsu our project coordinator, and Ms. Carol Almeida, our pro project coordinator on the tobacco team. And for the Carson area, we have Richard Biss, Miss Tiffany Tan for El Segundo, Marlon Pasquale in the Inglewood area, and out in the Gardena area, you have two unique community organizers, Ms. Tracy Saruwatari and myself, Jessica Abaya. So all of us are here to help you. We have the information. Please definitely reach out to us. Thank you again to our very special guest speaker, Paul, for joining us. And thank you everyone who is virtually watching our pilot edition podcast today. I want to end it with um, emphasizing Paul's message, which is very important, and I take it into heart because I also have smokers in my family, and that is specifically coming from Paul. I want to emphasize that he mentioned addiction. It is a serious thing. Don't start smoking. If you want to live a long and healthy life, don't start. And with this, I want to thank you guys, everyone for participating and goodbye, folks. See you soon.
Bye. <laughs>